Well, good morning again, or good day. Greetings, whatever time you're watching this. It could be good evening. Good e morning to you, Frank. Morning. I hope you were up early. We had a glorious sunrise here in, um, in Canterbury this morning. Typical autumn day, bright red skies right across the horizon of the Port Hills. They're looking spectacular. <laughs> do you do you get to see out the window this morning, or is the fog still down? Uh, it's in fact, I was only saying this morning. Holy hell, it's it's even thicker this morning. And of course, every Anzac Day, you can't see three feet in front of you when we go down to the War Memorial. Yeah, and it'll be the same tomorrow. I can see it. So the sun, there's a voice in the distance doing everything. So we guess oh. he's there. <laughs> All right. Well, okay. So let's um let's wander into today. And as um Frank's pointed out, tomorrow Anzac Day. So we um we hope you're going to uh, get out there and show your colours if you like for those who've passed away, those who've served uh, the two two great wars, one one and two, and in any service since those days. And uh, I was chatting to a guy yesterday who had rung me to say he had tidied up a war memorial up in Victoria Park in the Port Hills. And uh, just a general conversation about, you know, I was standing for the good work he'd done. And I said, the thing about memorials is, um, you know, I have no, no, um, no issues with them. I think they're great. But if it's closely related to you, someone who's passed away, why don't you go to some place where that person used to go and enjoy and be with them? You know, if it's a family member, get the family together and go to where great uncle Bill or great granddad or whatever used to go fishing or in the park or whatever it is. Um, and just make that, that link as opposed to standing around with a bunch of people you may not know, remembering uh, someone in front of a, um, a memorial. Mm. What do you think, Frank? Do you, is it a worthy idea, or am I just off? The I, no, I think uh, I think that's a good idea. Um, you know, I'm in the position where I had uh, two grandfathers in World War One, and two grand two fathers in World War Two. Um, none of them are around today, of course. So we tend to make it a sort of a family occasion. Yep. Um, you know, it re remembers them as we knew them. Yeah, uh, that's right. but not as a, a name on a memorial. Yeah, so true, yeah. so true. All right, so um, a little bit of news coming out of our last executive meeting. So the um, the special general meeting that we were going to hold in uh, April, we moved to May, and now we've pushed it down until um, post the production of a template constitution by the RNZ RSA, which won't be available until October this year, which gives us 17 months to go through the process of having it approved and um, getting it registered as our new constitution. So uh, there you go, a little bit of pressure off there, folks, if you're looking for that. Um, it will be quite lengthy and wordy because that's the uh, the way of the world today. You can't escape these things. And the other thing we, um, we're discussing was the annual general meeting and where should we hold it this year. So if you have some ideas, it needs to be somewhere that's easily accessible for um, a, a gathering of people. Um, and the suggestion has been made that uh, maybe it should be some kind of reunion. I have no problem with that. Um, as long as you're willing to help us put it together because the uh, executive committee are a bit busy and so their time is precious, just like yours. So um, if you want to uh, send us an email or something saying, yep, yeah, a gathering is a good idea, a reunion is a good idea, I'm happy to help. We'll gladly take your... Um, your offer of help, and we'll also happily take any suggestions as to um, where we should be holding it. Uh, yeah, it needs to be easily accessible so we can get as many people there as is possible. We will also run it online. Now, Frank, I hear that you're a little bit um, 
is it mildly warm under the collar following the um the stuff in the press over the over the weekend yeah it's it's um it it stunned me actually when I saw two whole pages wide and it referring to uh, especially one chap's episode of trying to get help through um veterans affairs um when after he'd done 20 odd years first um stouch of uh, military service yes. and then went back again to have another go and um Timor I think it was Timor and um then to Afghanistan and the way he was treated by veterans affairs was abs absolutely shocking now you would have all read it, and I'll say his name was um, uh, uh, Rob. I can't remember Rob Smith. I think his name was Rob Smith. Um, yep. And he, they were him and his wife were treated shockingly by Veterans Affairs. Affairs that started off that uh, oh no, you haven't had um, um, officially. Yeah, what do you call it? Um, Qualifying operational service. Qualifying operational service. Yeah. Which he had had. Um, and they went through, pushed from pillar to post to yep. get what he wanted. Uh, he's ended up with motor neuron disease. Oh, yes. And um, I, I think it's it just shows how poorly Veterans Affairs are operating at the moment. And we had Pink come on and say, oh, yes, we're going to have to do something about this. We're going to have to do something about it. Well, let's do it, Mr. Pink. Let's do it. Let's not have an episode with um, Rob Smith going through that just to get help. And there was one other one, but unfortunately I can't find the info I had. I don't know if you remember it. Oh, yes, that was the... Um, the lines. That was the guy who, um, who joined up in the 2000s and... Um had PTSD as a result that's of right. service yeah. in the um yeah. the Christchurch cordon. Yeah, and that's right. Because his um PTSD was attributable to his service in New Zealand, um, it's not covered by Veterans Affairs and also not covered by ACC because it's a um a cumulative effect, not a one off event. And so um I think the end of the article indicated that he had uh, had a stroke and was in care. Yep. yep. And, yep. and, and yep. The, um, the the bigger picture is that it's also affected his whole family, his wife now having um, mental health yep. issues as a result of the stresses and strains of having to look after him and raise the family. I, I don't know whether she's working, but that would be an added stress to life. Um, so the end picture, really not good. And, and just on that, that topic of ACC coverage, so 1 April 74, <clears throat> ACC came in, and if you were serving in Singapore for the first six months, you are potentially covered. But if you're yeah. overseas for longer than six months, you're not covered. So the question raises, what was NZ Defence doing, apart from running people around the... Um, the local hospitals uh, in, in our time, they were run by the Brits, I think, that they'd send us to, um, and getting medical treatment that way. But in many cases, the injuries or illnesses that were sustained in Singapore don't appear on medical files. So that's a bit of a hole. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, and, and I guess the, um, the issue now around deployments for people overseas, yes, I can understand the uh, Veterans Affairs covering injuries and illnesses received while uh, on service overseas, operational stuff. Um, but certainly no coverage for ACC unless the deployments are less than six months. So there we go. It's a little bit of, um, and I have to say that both of those articles have stirred up a fair bit of um, conversation about the iniquities in the system between the um, one hand you've got scheme one, scheme two and and within that the um, qualifying operational service or qualifying routine service so um, I think as far as I'm aware RNZ RSA is 
looking at the whole VSA 2014. They've got a, a working group that are studying the legislation to see um, where the iniquities are, how they can be removed, and making recommendations to get that system changed. But it's going to take longer than the end of this year, I can suspect. Yeah. And what amazed me with that chap there, it, it ended up right towards the end that um, he finally got some satisfaction was, oh, put your application in, a fresh application in again, and we'll relook at it. Now, how many applications do you need to make? Yep, yep. That was the thing. Uh, I think that was the, um, the, I'm not sure the paperwork had got lost, but I, I think he got a letter from Bernadine because yeah, they right. hadn't explained to him why his first application had been rejected. There was a hole yeah. in that system. And this is a system that is, that is really struggling. We've seen that with the changes um, as far as the VIP program goes. The staff are being redeployed. But as I understand it from speaking with the, um, the CEO of RNZ RSA on the weekend, that that's about four or five staff, perhaps, that are going from Veterans Improvement Program or Independence Program, rather, to working on applications under um, the VSA. So let's see what happens. And as I've said before, now people are being um, moved towards the Health New Zealand system or the New Zealand Health system, mm. which is also struggling and straining. And we've got, um, is it next week? The doctors are going on strike. <laughs> yeah, on the 25th. And the nurses and, and other staff within all the hospitals throughout the country are uh, overworked and there are huge gaps within the numbers. So they just don't have the staff either. So it's not looking good for the immediate short-term future yeah yeah no that's for real so speaking of uh, veterans affairs so down here in the south island may the 10th the um, vans clinics at the air force museum in wigram uh, apparently there are about um, four or five gaps still remaining or it was the other day so if you need to make an appointment the cutoff date is the 27th of april which is um, saturday so make contact with either Tom Turnbull, Patrick Duggan, or Joe Cox, I think it is, and um, make it known that you'd like to um, have a chat to to one of the case managers. It won't necessarily be yours. Anything else to throw into the pot this morning, Frank? No, not really. It's just, um, as I said, we've been flat out uh, organising for Anzac Day. Um, don't forget, go out there with pride. And, um, you know, join your mates, remember those that are not with us, and then afterwards uh, go down to the local club, which I will be doing. In fact, with me at this, at this age, everything's over by about 7.30. In the morning. That's the rum and everything. Fair <laughs> <laughs> enough, fair enough. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, I never seem to make the I never seem to make the ten o'clock parade. Right. I I used to have a um a list of people I would um that I had served with who had passed away. And once it got past sixty something people, I just had to put a stop to the list because I couldn't remember all their names. Um yeah. and that was my little thing on, on um on Anzac Day. I'd just take time aside and and just recall those people that I had served with who had passed. Um but now it's a matter of I have to make it a kind of blanket thing. But um, I think it is an important time to just remember those who've served and have passed away. It doesn't matter where you served or what the branch of service they were in. Um, keeping the memory alive keeps them alive in the, uh, in the minds of others as well. All right, speaking of that, uh, last post um, or crossing the bar, Frank. Yeah, I've... Um... I think I'll start off. I've got one here from the Air Force, and then I think you've got one as well. So, yep. Um, I've got W71987 McGregor, Trevor Robert, British Empire Medal, Justice of the Peace, and was a warrant officer in the Royal New Zealand Air Force. Passed away 15th of April 2024. A private cremation has been held for Trevor. 
And I have yeah, right, um, oh sorry. Yep. No, carry on. Um Air Commodore retired. Mervin William known as Merv Hodge, OBE, AFC C V S A A M M Malaysia. Sierra seven seven two five zero. He was a pilot in the RNZAF from the second of January fifty four until the first of June nineteen eighty five. Uh, passed away on April the sixth, twenty twenty four. Back to you, Frank. Okay. Carrying on with the uh, Navy crossing the bar, we have Lad John Oliver, a captain, Royal New Zealand Navy. Cross the bar in Tauranga Hospital on the 19th of April 2024. Um, a service to celebrate his life will be held at Legacy Papamoa, 3 Tokoroa Drive, Papamoa, Friday the 26th. There is no time, but it will be in the paper. Then we have NZ152756, Walker Barry Francis, commonly known as Biff. I don't know why he got that name, but it'd be interesting. Radio electrical mechanic. He joined in uh, 1 bar 55, served on Royalist, served 58 to 50, 57 and 58 on Royalist. Uh, crossed the bar on 19th of April 2024. A celebration of Barry's life will be held at Centennial Park Chapel uh, of Davis Funerals, 150 Cent Central Park Drive, Henderson. 27th of April, 2024, at 10 a.m. Then we have NZ, sorry, NZ19608 and W102384. Marsh, Keith Frederick. He was a Chief Petty Officer Diver, Royal New Zealand Navy, and was also serving with New Zealand Defence Forces as a guard. He crossed the bar 23rd of April, 2024. Further details will be advised. And then NZ11231, Skulls Norman Joseph, commonly known as Norm, DSM, leading seaman, Royal New Zealand Navy, served on Rotoiti during the Korean War. Norm crossed the bar 14th of April 2024 at SE Summers Retirement Village. A private cremation has been held. Please accept our condolences to all the family and friends. Thank you. Um, thank you, Frank. And um, I know, I think it was in the week I saw that um, it was 12 months since John Titmus had passed. Yep, that's, 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 that's flying quick, isn't it? Just amazing. So for those of you who weren't aware, JT was a member of the executive committee um, up until... I think just weeks before his passing. So we, uh, someone else to remember. For the last post, we've only got one, which is, um, and I have no service number or era of service, was Mason Wethery. He passed away in, um, in Australia on the 17th of April, 2024. And I've just seen a, a, a flag this morning on Facebook to say there is a service for him. So if you have a look, I think it's on the Southeast Asian Veterans page. Have a look there. It's been posted by um, Guy Dreyer, I think it is, in Australia. So uh, have a look. And our condolences are extended to the families of all those uh, we've mentioned. And again, if you um, need some assistance, don't hesitate to give us a call or send us a message or something. Send us an email to, um, to Morris and we'll be able to um, organise some assistance for you. And because I was a bad boy last week, I'll do the ode. I'll try and get it right this week, Frank. They shall grow not old, as we that are left grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun, and in the morning, we will remember them. We will remember them, lest we forget. Thank you, Frank. So that's that's us for today, folks. But short and sweet. Um, hope the preparation is going well for tomorrow. The shoes are signed. The pants have a crease in them. Medals, if you have them, are on the correct side. And um, have had a bit of a buff up in the clean. And uh, those of you who are in Canterbury, I look forward to seeing you at the dawn service in the Cathedral Square. 
I think muster time is about six o'clock at uh, corner of Worcester Boulevard there. And so, um, yes, we look forward to uh, catching up with you next week. Take care. Don't over imbibe in the, uh, mind you, at our age, it gets a bit harder, doesn't it, after the first ale, you're a bit, um, a bit slower in the thinking department. Yeah, but uh, yeah, yeah. Just, just remember, and your mates, and if they're not there and they have been fronting up, give them a call, see, see that they're okay. Uh, and again, if there's any issues that they need help with, uh, either via the RSA or Veterans Affairs, make contact with someone from the executive or from your local RSA support uh, network and um, don't hesitate to seek assistance. It's never too late, but it's better earlier than, than late. All right. Thank you, Frank, exactly. for your presence today and for the rest of you, go well, uh, be safe, yep. and uh, we'll catch you next week. All right. Bye.